You're listening to the Robert Elm Show here on BBC Radio London, and we're about to find out about the Spits. Some of you will have known the Spits as a music venue, but it's also now a music charity, which is celebrating 10 years of delivering music to transform lives. And I'm joined by two people to tell us a little more. I'm joined by um, founding director of the Spits, Jane Glittery, and Arthur Lee, musician. Welcome both of you to BBC Radio London. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's begin with you, Jane. So 10 years of, of the Spits. Did it start at the venue? What's the relationship? No, I was running the venue from the end of 97 till its sad demise at the end of September 2007. And for those who don't remember, where was, where was the Spitalfields Spit? Market, Old Spitalfields Market. Okay. And it was a music venue, bistro and gallery Okay. in the only detached building in the market. So yep. it's a pretty big project. Um, and so after the final night, we, a great night in the Spits, we had to close up, lock down. And on that final day of locking up, as I turned the key, I had this strange thought of who's in our nursing homes these days. I'm sure they don't want the White Cliffs of Dover anymore. <laughs> so that was the seed of the thought. And then it took a further six years to actually create the charity. And so when you, you speak about nursing homes, is this music specifically made for people in nursing homes? Is that, is that No, the... not at all. Right. No, it's all kinds of music, all kinds of genres. There's so many different people in our nursing homes. So, but, but, but what I mean is, your your the end kind of servers of the a charity are people in nursing homes. Yes, and also hospitals. Right. And originally a lot of day centres, but quite a few of those shut down. Right. And we've recently started working Great Ormond Street as well. Wow. So we've been working. So you're working at both ends of exactly, the spectrum in that exactly. sense. Exactly. And that's only been the last six months. Because so. I guess most of us have an idea that I'm sure, as you said, you probably expect the Andrews sisters or something. Exactly. And if you think of the, the Rolling Stones of turning 80, you know, it just doesn't make sense anymore. There's a lot of funky people in our nursing homes. Well, I'm a big Clash fan and I'm approaching <laughs> retirement age. Yes. So it's kind of... Exactly. So, I think, so how does it work? How does it, how, do you work with musicians? How does it... What's the, we what? work with professional musicians, but who are all very empathetic people, very able to read the room, improvise and respond to whatever's going on in the room because... You literally cannot plan it in terms of there's always an unexpected event that happens. So we have to respond to those as well as all the joyous events. So, I mean, this is where Arthur is so brilliant. Yeah, so actually. Arthur's over there. So Arthur, how did you get involved in this? So um, I think I met Jane many years ago um, through a, and a friend who was working with her, a singer, and she booked us on a gig together. And then when she was setting up the spits, I think I did some of the very first gigs there. Um and it was, I think, the first things I was doing, I was just playing the piano, a bit like yeah. the lovely piano you have here. It's a very lovely piano. And um, it would be in a room uh, with elderly residents and just providing an atmosphere. Um, but the minute you do that in a piano, you get people asking you to play things. So someone will wander over and say, do you know this or that or the other? And then, of course, I would say, oh, I don't know. Oh, let me have a think about that, as the piano player always does in that situation. Um, but the lovely thing in that setting is then you can take a moment so you can have a chat with that person, find out why they like that song, what, what's special about that song. Then you've also got, you can like listen to it on your phone, and then you can have a go at playing it for them. And if it's not the best rendition they've ever heard, that's not the most important thing. At that moment, that connection you've made with them is far more powerful than that. I was going to say, what do, what do musicians get out of this? I can, I can see what the people in the, in the care homes or wherever it is might get out of it. What do the musicians get, do you think? I mean, there's, there's whenever, wherever you're playing music as a musician, you're always playing for a certain situation and certain people are going to hear you um there's something really special about playing for people who maybe do not have access to the music that they once had in their life let's put it like that if you're if you are living in care um you, you have the radio have the tv but you're not able to go out and see concerts like you might have no. once done you're not able to share special occasions family events in the same way you, you still share them but it, it's a different way that you're doing that stuff we had a wonderful day just um, a month or two ago, didn't we? It was a birthday of a resident at Bridgeside. Um, and he had his family there. He had daughters and he had his, uh, his grandson. No, no, his son. His, I think his grandson was there too. I, I can't remember. There were a lot, suddenly a lot of family in the his room. Family. <laughs> his son was there. And, he, and his, we, we played a couple of songs. We did Happy Birthday. And then his, his son said that he sang. And I, you know, oh, the, the song's gone out of my head now. But I, I think it was a Beatles song. It might have been Hey Jude. Right. 
And he just sang this song for his dad, who sat right next to him. And it, I mean, everybody in the room for the whole thing was on the edge of tears. But it was <laughs> that wonderful kind of happy, sad, you know, full of emotion that you only can get in those kind of personal, wonderful situations. So as a musician, it's a real honour and a privilege to share that with, with other people. Um, how do, do, do most care homes have pianos? Or what's the situation? Do you have to... I don't know whether most care homes have pianos, but we've we've got our own equipment that we can take. Okay, we're actually based in a care home, which is an unusual situation. Yeah, as well. I was going to say I, I I saw that. Tell us a bit about that. Well, when we were first doing all the day centres, and we were a very young charity with not much money to spare, I kept looking at these places and thinking, "There's lots of spare room here. Maybe we could have an office in one of their play, one one of their spare rooms." And I eventually asked Fatma Makala at Bridgeside Lodge. If there was any Which way, is up in Islington? Yeah, it's in Islington by the canal. Right. It's a really beautiful setting. And is there anywhere within that building that we could have a small space to do our office work? She just jumped at it. And it was such a great step because being there doing admin as well as being there for the actual sessions means that you get to know people in a completely different way. You get to hear all sorts of funny little anecdotes that you can then feed into the musicians to help them to do what that person would most love to. And do you get asked to come and play at different places? Yes, we were then, uh, about two and a half years ago, asked to go and play at Northwick Park Hospital. Right. And that's continued. We've had some money from the NHS to help that happen. That was originally in the older people's ward. And then we also were asked to go to the stroke ward in Northwick Park and more recently in the mental health ward. So they've been playing... Absolutely. And do you see a difference to the people you're playing to? Does does music have an immediate effect, would you say? Uh, definitely. I mean, there's times when it has a very sudden immediate effect that can be quite surprising that someone who's been sat very still for the first 10 minutes suddenly, of the music yeah. suddenly jumps up and joins in with the song. That you're really? Or does yeah. that happen? Yes, yeah, or, yes. or might start dancing, or might just call something out. Um, but also there's much longer term effects. I mean, we, we know people, in, especially at Bridgeside Lodge, where we've been based for a long time, real changes of character. People who've come into the home looking, you know, dishevelled, lost, small, unhealthy, regular music with them, uh, you know, really playing the things that they want to hear, giving them a chance to contribute. And they start really blossoming. And we're thinking of one, one particular resident here. I yes, he, he, um, he arrived at the, at the care home in 2017, in theory, with three months to live. Mm. But we were told early on that how much he loved music. We were gradually able to go into his room with his permission and play to him. And fast forward seven months, and he actually got the strength to come out of his room, come into the garden and come to one of our outdoor gigs in the garden, which are really great. And then the next day, because we were based in the care home, I could nip up to his room and say, thank you so much for coming to the party, because I knew it was a huge, huge step for him. And he just looked me in the face and said, get me a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So we got him a guitar. It and... wasn't Keith Richards, was it? <laughs> <laughs> and um, our general manager, Tom, he's, he's also a guitarist, so he, he would give him guitar lessons for maybe 20 minutes a week. And he's still alive. He's blossoming. Wow. He plays all the time. He's, it's just a sight to behold. Um, what are you doing to celebrate your 10 years? Well, first of all, we did do a party at the care home because that seemed appropriate just to make sure we were doing that. And we had a great time. And then we've just launched a new website this morning. So that's spits.org.uk with a new crowdfunder in the, I was in say, the website. I didn't want to mention money, but where does the money come from? <laughs> All sorts of a sort of jigsaw of different funders. Some small, sometimes when we're lucky, Arts Council funding, National Lottery. So um, do the musicians some, get paid? I don't mean they that. They do. <coughs> yeah, right. I'm really, you know, having run a music venue, yeah. I'm really hot on the musicians getting paid properly yeah. and also it's very very emotional work so you kind of need to know that you're getting paid as well as you know being looked after in every way possible well you're not going to be paid today sir <laughs> <laughs> jane says you might get me a coffee after. but you are going to sing and play for us is this one that you would you would play at, at one of the events or yeah so this is a song that i've played at bridgeside lodge many times it's, it's a song that i do in my own gigs it's, um, I, I recorded a version, I put it out. Um, it, it's born out of, uh, of COVID times, actually, which yeah. was a very difficult time I'm for, sure for care was. homes, particularly. Yeah. Um, but we, we were, it was amazing that we were able to carry on going to Bruce Lodge. We did things in the garden, 
uh, when we were able to go inside, we did go inside, and it was really noticeable the effect it had on everybody there, um, especially the staff actually during that really yes. difficult time. And and this is a song I wrote kind of from one particular day that of that was of memory, but just of of the the role that music was playing and what a joy it was to do so. What's it called? The band played on. Play it. Yeah. <clears throat> It was a grey day and the sun was gone But the band played on Not too much good news for anyone But the band played on They played out in the garden They played in the rain Not too many listening But they played all the same Strange way to play a song But the band back on But the band played on Too many friends Too many gone But the band played on They played just for the fun of it They played with all their heart Strange way to play a song But the man played on Fantastic. That was the band played on by Arthur Lee, one of the musicians who's part of the whole Spitz initiative. Where can people find out more about Spitz? On the website, spitz.org.uk. There's lots of films and photos and... Brilliant. And more power to your elbow or whatever bits of your body you use. Because <laughs> it sounds like a fantastic <laughs> thing you do. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, much for having us. You're listening to The Robert Elm Show here on BBC Radio London. And we're about to find out about the Spitz.